So we're gonna have a little breakfast right here on the rocks and then the plan is to go fishing. And I got a lot of questions about what kind of grill I use. And so I'll tell you guys a little bit about this grill later. I plan to cook up some fish that I catch today right on this grill. First cast, first fish, I literally just dropped it. I think it's a big orange kelp greenling. Actually, I don't know if it's big. Oh no, it's stuck. There it is. Oh, it's a small kelp greenling. It's orange though. Bit on the shrimp. I literally just casted, first cast, first drop. Let's see, this has gotta be 12 inches of keep. We're up on these cliffs today. I never fished this exact spot before. I love the way kelp greenling tastes too. Damn, inhaled that shrimp. Check out the colors on this guy. First cast, first fish, that's a great sign. Yeah, it's 13. And it swallowed the hook. I'm gonna see if I could release this. If not, oh man, it, it inhaled it. So I got Gina over here fishing the, these cliffs with me. I got her on some bait. She's set up with some shrimp and a squid. And then for me, I haven't even set up yet, but we just caught that kelp greenling. But I'm going with the swim bait and uh, fishing these cliffs. All right. All right, for me, I'm using six inch swim bait right here. Brown. I got a one ounce on. It's not very, uh, it's not very heavy, but you know, I've never fished this spot before, so I wanna see how deep it is, how much weight I'll need. Let's see if we get a fish to bite this. Tons of rocks here. Pretty clear water, I would say. Got 65 pound test main line and then some uh, 50 pound mono. Let's top that off. It doesn't appear too deep. Right there, I'm about to hop over a rock. I can see my line. There's like a shelf right there. And I think that if I, I'm on it and I drop, and it's gonna drop right in front of it, very possible that there's gonna be a fish right there. There's, there's that wave, right where that wave came in. There's a rock right there. Yeah, I think it dropped already. Man, the water is so clear. I was re-rigging and Gene got a blue rockfish on. Yeah. It's perfect size to perfect size to steam. Alright, changed it out to a grub. So let's go ahead and back to the spot. Let's just throw from up here. That grub should get hit by some rockfish. So I've gotten some questions about what kind of rod I use and reel I use when I come out here uh, and fish from shore for rockfish. This is a G Loomis, it's a salmon spinning rod, eight foot six. And it's paired with the Spiros SW5000 reel. I have a 65 pound, 65 pound mainline, and I usually use like a 50 pound leader. If not, I just tie it 
tie that 65 pound mainline straight on to uh, my lure. See a blue rockfish right there. Oh, well, swimming pretty fast, so maybe they're feeding. Hopefully. I know later it's supposed to get a little windier. So I won't be able to throw a swim bait later. But I'm trying to work it as much as I can now and later switch to uh, to bait. Look at that blue rockfish. Three of them. Just felt the tap. I don't know if that was a small hit. Oh, yep. That was a hit. Yep, that was a hit. I knew I smelt the <laughs> smelt. I knew I felt a small tap. And then it and then it really hit. Did not get hooked though. The good thing is I know there's a fish there. I'm gonna keep working that spot. I wonder what kind of fish that was. Felt like a rockfish hit. It's pretty much what we're after today, rockfish. Work that spot again. There it is, there it is. Something's tapping at it. Something's tapping at it. Man, and it disappears after I get away from that spot. My guess is another blue. Again, I'm gonna keep working that same spot, trying to run right through it. So I know there's a hungry fish there. There it is. Taps. See that? See that? Take it. Small. Probably can't even fit the worm in his mouth. Man, I gotta get that fish. Got it. Yep, got it. I think it's a small blue. It's a rockfish. See it right there? See it in the water? That's so cool. That is so cool. I got it though. That is so cool. The water is so clear. Don't spit it. Don't spit it. I knew it was a blue. The way it was biting, they have small mouths. They have small mouths. So it's like, you know, they could barely get this thing in their mouth, but got it though. Me and you got a blue. Look at this thing, can't even get it in his mouth. I don't even see if it's hooked. Is it even hooked? Yeah, it's barely hooked, it didn't even go through at all. This is probably like a 13, 14 inch blue. Not bad. 
distinguishing factors for blue rockfish. They had kind of have this mask. I call it a mask where they have these black stripes right here and also a speckled pattern on them. But mainly the black stripes and a, and a smaller mouth is what distinguishes these blues from black rockfish. Trying to work that same spot again. Try to see if there was more than just that one hungry blue that was there. So I'm running through that same spot again where I caught that blue rockfish and I'm not feeling those taps anymore. So I, oh, yep, there's one, there's one. Never mind, never mind, felt the tap again. So never mind, I guess there's another hungry blue over there. The most common types of rockfish that school up are these blue rockfish. I cast it slightly to the right of where I cast it earlier. There's a bite. Oh, I missed it. There's a little spot out there. Seems to be where the fish are. So I'm gonna keep working that spot. Watch for subtle little hits on my on the tip of my rod. There's one. There it is. Oh yeah, okay. Probably another blue. Oh no. Oh yeah, it's black. It's a black. The water is so clear, you could see it in the water. It's amazing. Look at that. Look at that. All right, let's get him out the seaweed. It's a black. It's a nice black though. Yep, it's a black. Let me show you the difference. It's a nice black. Amazing, the water is so clear. Hook set right in the corner of the mouth, so. Remember how I mentioned that mask earlier? Yeah, this is a nice black. So remember how I mentioned earlier that those blues have those spots or the, the bands on their face that I call a mask? It's really not that apparent on these black rockfish. Their mouths are bigger and their spots are slightly, slightly different. Nice fish though. So cool seeing them swim in the water when you're when you catch them. Amazing. Amazing blue water right now. Ooh. I love it, man. That's a good. Hmm? That's a good. Yeah? Oh crap, that's a nice one. Oh I... yeah, it's a Hold on. Oh, that's a cabazon. Yeah, that's a cap. Look at her. Look at her go. Hold on. Let's see the cap. Oh, yeah, it's a cap. Yeah. There it is. That's a nice cap. Let's see. It. Oh, that's a nice cap. Good job. Dude, you got a cap on the squid, huh? I told you something bites it. Oh, that's a nice cap. That's a nice cap. Is on, baby. Nice cap is on right there. Good job. Her first time fishing these rocks with me. Woo. Look at this gorgeous cabazon that Jean just caught on some squid. Amazing. This is a 19 inch cabazon and a bit on squid. Dude, crazy. These guys go for $20 a pound at, at a seafood market when they're live. And look at how when they lay down like this, their fins just play out just like that. And that's how when they go into those rocks, sometimes they, they kind of stay under crevices. They could just flay out their fins like that and they get, they get stuck. They could take your bait and they could get stuck in those rocks. But Gene played that out nicely. All I heard was, hey, I got one. I got a big one. And then I look up and man, sure enough, this is a 19 inch cabbie right here. Amazing patterns, brown right here. Got those spots. Really, really, really good day so far almost 11 so we've been fishing for i don't know probably like two hours or so something like that oh great day so far all right let's get back out there
Ooh, that was a big bite. That was a... Oh, we got one! You got a blue, nice! <laughs> on camera, on the underwater camera, is a small blue. Very, very cool. I've seen it. Yeah? I saw it from up here. Really? That's so cool. The, the water is so clear. Small blue. Let's go get some I brought this grill here with me. Uh, this company, Vida Libre, sent this to me. So that's what we're using today to cook on these rocks. Let's check it out. Two more in the back. Take these guys off. I think this is a lid. Whoa. Yep. All right. It's got the lid. Comes with a bag. Got this pot lid. You could also use it as a tray. And there's some handles. Kind of cool. Use this as a saute pan. There's a, a grid for barbecuing if you'd like. And then there's a six liter pan in here. It's pretty handy fit everything in there. I think I'm gonna boil some water in here later to steam my fish. And then there's another grid in here for charcoal. The food separated from the charcoal. And then there's some components for actually hooking up to propane. So this hooks up to the propane uh, gas tank, the gas pipe. And this hooks up, uh, to con you could actually control the flame this is where the flame is going to come out and there's a mechanism in here that's going to allow you to well, ignite and then also control the flame and then some uh, smoke pipes actually you could attach like a little chimney and then what else do they got in here a spoon comes with a spoon And then another, like a big ladle. And some skewers. All of this is stainless steel. So pretty nice, I might cook up some sausages on this guy. So that's the inside of the stove slash grill, whatever you want. And there's these metal legs that actually come out and if you wanna use that. And then there's a little door here with air vents. We're going to be using charcoal, but you could use wood, propane, if you want. So pretty, pretty neat. Right here on the rocks. Ooh, got to say that was a pretty good day. It's lunchtime now, so we're getting stuff ready. We got the grill or the stove, grill, whatever. I mean, it could be both. We picked up some wood along the way, just in case we run out of charcoal. The first thing is to start this charcoal and then we're gonna start boiling some water. I'm gonna steam some fish today out here on these cliffs right here. And look at this, absolutely beautiful. Let me show you guys, literally right behind me, we're up on this cliff right here. It's a little windy today, or now it is. That's why we only had time in the morning to fish. But we're gonna cook up some food right now. Oh, it's windy. It is windy. Prepare the fish. I'm gonna gut it. I am going to scale it. I'm gonna score it and sprinkle a little salt on top. 
Got this black rockfish scaled. And now I'm actually gonna gut the fish. And this is a little trick that my dad taught me. You basically cut at the gills. I already did that when I bled the fish. And then you cut at the butthole. And then it's almost like a trout in which you could just cut the gills. And you can grab all the gills and pull out. You'll essentially pull out all the guts with it. That way you don't really have to open up the fish at all. That's another way to, to gut your fish without, uh, you know, opening up the entire cavity right there. This is for the seagulls or whatever fish are down there too. Now we could just score this guy. We'll just give it three scores. to help it steam a little better. Great, now we can rinse this and then uh, sprinkle a little salt. It's, it's getting hot. So we got the six liter pan that came with this. So got some water in there. And then we're just gonna boil some water to steam our fish. It's gonna slice up a little bit of ginger right there. Just a little bit. Nice. This is such a perfect size black rockfish right here. Perfect eating size. Alright, we are good. We are good. I think the water should be boiling. Let's see. Let's open it up. Yeah, good enough. Yep. First look. Oh yeah, that smells good. All right, I think it's done. It smells like ginger and fish. <laughs> Let me uh, take a fork to it. If the meat breaks off easily, the meat's all white, I think we're good. All right, let's take this guy out. It's got some green onions here. Got a little bit of oil going in right now. All right, that's good enough. Now we're putting this all over this fish. Let's get that seafood soy sauce in there. That's good. All right, there we go. There we go. It's one of my favorite ways to eat rockfish. Just like that. Ooh, man. Let me see what's on your lap over here. Ooh. Look at that flaky fish just comes, all that meat just comes right out. Ooh. There's some bones right there. Huh? This one, I know. That's soy sauce. Smells awesome. Mm-hmm. Tastes like home. My parents make this. Well, they make rockfish this way. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, let's get back to cooking. So what we're also going to do is steam or saute some guy lime. This is like Chinese broccoli. And this is one of my favorite vegetables growing up. It looks like this. And the way you pick it in the store is you look for the stems that look like they've been freshly harvested. You can see how it's, the middle of the stem is, or the stalk looks white versus this one. You can see how, you know, it's been harvested for a while and there looks like there's some hardening or some growth right here. And when choosing these, 
You also want to avoid the ones with flowers. They're a little more mature and so um, they're, they're kind of thicker and a little stringier, which is what you want to avoid. But it's pretty simple to, uh, to prepare these guys and it tastes kind of like broccoli in that they're, they're crunchy and they're supposed to be crisp, but they could have a very, very slightly bitter taste. But I, I don't really taste it, but this is one of my favorite vegetables to eat. Just tossing some gylon in here. This oil, got some ginger slices, some crushed garlic. What I normally do is I make sure that most of them are covered in that oil. That's where the flavor is with the garlic and ginger. I'm gonna add like just a little bit of water and then close it up for like a minute or two to let it steam. Just a tiny bit. Let it steam for a minute. Hi, right, got the steamed fish. I got the gylon here and then got some butter garlic rice right here. And Gene over there got some corn going on the grill. You wanna try this? Mmm. Mmm. Oh, that butter. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's butter rice, so. Good? Mm hmm. Some of this fish. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I gotta dip in that sauce. Add a piece of ginger on there if I eat it. Mm. <laughs> Jean got her PB, personal best cabagon today. It was big. I'm so proud of her. I'm proud of myself. I didn't think I could do it. What? <laughs> I was like, it's so big. You could do it. And you did it. I did it. I think this is the most fish I've ever caught in one day. Really? I think so. Oh, you got three fish today. Yeah, three. But, I mean, you don't really fish a lot, right? So, yeah. that's why. But when I do. But when you do, she catches fish. Yeah, it was a good day. Yeah. They were biting today. Nice little spot. I've never fished there before. But I love it. It's beautiful. We got this beautiful view behind us. It's a little, it's a little windy today. That's the only thing. But other than that, it's gorgeous here. Mm -hmm. Up on this cliff right here, what do you think it is a drop like 50 feet down at least, right? I feel like it's a little more. Yeah. The water's pretty clear for. Oh, well, the water's too clear earlier. Yeah. I mean, that spot we we're at earlier, yeah. If you can see the fish. Following your following bait, huh? Following my bait. That's so cool. I love it. I love that. Oh, buddy. It's fun. Yeah, hell yeah, it's fun. It's always fun. Mmm. -hmm. I have some of this Gylon too. Yeah. So, Gylon stalks are, they have the texture of broccoli. It's like broccoli stalks, you know? Broccolini. Yeah. Mm. Maybe that's why they call it Chinese broccoli. Mm hmm. It's so good. Mm hmm. That girl we got is awesome. Mm hmm. It is. It's pretty nice. Mm -hmm. It came in clutch. And I feel like it's good to have at home too. Like it's not so big yeah. and it's low maintenance. Mm hmm. A little backyard grilling. Ooh, that corn pop. I'm gonna go check on that. Making popcorn? Yep. Well, we got one side of the fish done. Flip this fish over. Oh, snap. That fish has been marinating all up in the soy sauce. That's the underside of it. That looks good. I'm gonna eat it. Mm. Heck yeah. Oh my god. It's so good. Mm hmm. Let's get it. We're just tearing into this thing. This is as fresh as it's gonna get. Oh yeah. And the meat is just so tender. But we're gonna chill out and finish up this food. 
have some more food. Got corn grilling. And then uh make some spores. Spores. Did I say spores or s'mores? S'mores. We're making s'mores. See y'all on the next one. Signing off. Later, guys.